In this video, I will discuss the benefits of the Global Firmware Update tool that is available for the TRIO Q licensed data radio and then provide a quick demonstration. It sometimes becomes necessary to upgrade the radio system firmware, whether to add some new capability or to solve an issue that has been discovered. This may be fairly simple in a small system, but with a larger system it can take a great amount of time to go to each site and upgrade its radio. To avoid this expensive necessity, it is possible with the TRIO Q data radio to upgrade all radios at once over the air, even if they are using different firmware versions using a broadcast tool. This tool is part of TRIO's TVU Plus management suite of software. To minimize the impact on an operational radio system, firmware data is trickled onto the radio channel at only 5% of the channel capacity. Also, it is typically not necessary to send a full firmware file to each radio. Instead, a much smaller patch file containing only new code can be sent. A global firmware upgrade can take up to 24 hours to complete, but this is far quicker than the alternative. As an added feature, an auto-discovery capability has been built into the tool to ensure radios can be found easily. Here we're looking at the SNMP configuration page of a TRIO Q radio. The SNMP feature must be enabled with SNMP version 1 or 2C. Also, the read-write community string entered here must be the same as that used in the discovery tool. After this has been configured, we would click the Activate Configuration button. This slide shows the TVU Plus software. This may be downloaded at no charge from the Schneider Electric website or purchased on CD. After installing Run the Software, you will first see the main TVU Plus Management Suite window. Click the bottom button, which is labeled Firmware Update. The tool that opens can be used to upgrade the serial-only TRIO radios as well, but here we will click the Q Series Firmware Upgrade button to open the tool. Here is the Q-Series Firmware Upgrade tool. First, you can see that if you had a previously saved list of radios, you could load it now, avoiding the need to perform a discover, which can take some time. Next is the network address, which in this case is 192.168.2.0. All devices in this network will be 192.168.2. anywhere between 1 and 254. The mask must match that used in the radios. The read-write community string, again, must be the same as entered into the radios. We then click the Discover button, and all addresses within the range specified by the mask will be tested. The system we are using today has three radios, so those three are quickly found. They are all at the beginning of the address range. Other addresses will be tested, however, uh, they will not be found because they don't exist. Rather than wait for all 200 plus addresses to be tested, I will hit the cancel button. And now, once the abort procedure has completed, I can delete by selecting the addresses that are not valid. Here I have selected only the two unused addresses that remain in the list, and I will click the Delete Selected button. Now we have only the three active radios. It is also possible to manually populate the list. Only the IP address, mask, and community string are required. Note that the mask used for each radio in the unit list will by default be set to the same as the Discover mask. However, at this time the mask for each radio must in fact match the mask used by the radios. Once all radios that exist have been discovered, they must be verified by selecting them and then clicking the Verify Selected button. This ensures first that the radios are still available and online. Secondly, each radio is interrogated for its current and alternate firmware versions. Once this is completed, you can remove a radio if it does not need to be updated or if it is no longer responding. The next step is to choose the new version of firmware to load. This can be downloaded from the Schneider Electric website on the TRIO licensed radio pages. Note that if patch files are to be used, it is only necessary to select the zip file containing those patches. It is not necessary 
to unzip that file. Simply select it and open it and then click Upload Firmware. We now need to wait. It may take as much as 24 hours to upgrade all radios. Once the new firmware has been loaded into the radios, it will appear as the alternate version. At this point, the radios are still operating normally. When the Activate Alternate button is pressed, the radios will, however, reboot and begin using the new firmware. Ensure first that the system operators are ready for a brief disruption as the radios reboot. After all radios have rebooted, the new firmware version will appear in the current firmware column, and the radios are now operational with the new version. Thank you for watching this video in which we discussed the benefits of the Global Firmware Upgrade Tool and then demonstrated its use.